This is going to be so tight, but Jordy Fong absolutely flying in the middle. That ball is hardly in the water. Come on then, push it. Jordi Bonk, fourth in France, first in the first elimination here in Korea. I cannot believe it. It's just, it's the first bullet. You always remember it, I guess. And um, now we just got to try to do it again. One, 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 oh, one shot. Now the future is yours. Go. Yeah, it's one, oh, one shot. Now the future is yours. Go. Yeah, it's one all oh, one shot, now the future is yours, go! Everyone's talking about the final because there is no uh, guarantees that we will finish a third elimination. We've got Bruno Martini, again, he was in the final in France. He's been pushing hard this year. Uh, Sebastian Kirdel, obviously up there in France. He's sitting in third place in the overall standings coming into this event in Korea. Kicked off elimination one with a disaster, but he's coming back strong in this elimination two. And he is definitely one to watch. When he's on his game, he could win this final, no doubt about it. Who's your money on? I think I, I put my money on Antoine. He, now he's, he's coming back strong. He has the mental game on. He, you know, when he does bad, he comes back strong. It's okay, here we go, lining up. We've got the Gastras up the top end. Here we go. Antoine Albo down the pin end. It looks like maybe Bruno Martini or Farin with a really good start at the top. We've got one of the Gastras, it's got to be Sebastian Kirdle. Absolute proper drag race to that first mark. And it's going to be, I think, Bruno Martini round in first place. Uh, second place is going to be Matthias Isaac, I think. Third place is Antoine Albo trying to chase down his younger teammate. Bruno Martini leading. Second place, Mateus Isaac. How far back is Matteo Iacchino? How far back is Cedric Board? That podium is still open. Bruno Martini really looking to get his first win. Mateus Isaac, really good race from the Brazilian in second place. This is what we like to see. About 20 metres to go. Bruno Martini takes the elimination two final. What a race. Bruno Martini, Matteo Iacchino, fifth. He knows that's a bit upsetting, but still, he's going to be leading this competition. I think that was a fist pump of delight. You are with seven other guys, so you have to, you have to fight for, for the win. But obviously, anytime you're going that fast, that many people converging on one point, there's potential for, for crashes and there's potential for you know, doing physical damage. Well, Sebastian Cullum's gone into the lead. What a race. He won the qualifying heat before this, and he's now leading this quarter-final. Tati Franz has dropped back. Has Rusha come through? Rusha, and it looks like Tristan Algray. So, Cullum, rounding first. Oh, there's a crash! Tati Franz taking down Multa Rusha. Oh, and they are swimming. They are swimming. We didn't quite see it, did we? But that is a disaster. He hit Mata right from the side, full power. The spray of the jibe uh, into the light, he didn't see Malta going, going uh, short and he thought he went wide on the jibe and he could cut inside. And then, uh, yeah, he, he crashed straight into him. I'm sure he wanted to keep competing because Malta is really competitive and he's really good, so he wanted to keep going. You um, you want to see the doctor? Maybe the neighbor. I I want to discuss. Just please hold the hand. I I will maybe later I will ask for the doctor, but yeah. I think now it's okay. After the adrenaline go, goes off, he felt it, and yeah, obviously he couldn't walk, and yeah, really bad, poor guy. And he's just coming straight without starting to drive, just blazing, you know, like. Full speed. Yeah, that didn't look too good. Did you see it? I saw it. I didn't. You can't understand from here what it was, but right. you saw the this impact. Years ago, we went to the no rules principle, which doesn't mean that there's no rules. It just meant no right away rules. And what we saw in Solemn was was there was too much protest involved, and we would do one heat, come back to the beach, do the protest, and we were just having a hard time, even perfect windy conditions, finishing rounds. Mike is lying to my face. Mike is lying to my face. I cannot establish whether I hit him or not. I cannot establish whether I hit him or not. Mike, uh, 
So we went into this no rules principle where it allowed the sailors to be much more aggressive without getting penalized for traditional rule infringements. And we've actually seen very few injuries. The guys and girls are very much in control and we've seen very little of it. Um, but obviously anytime you're going that fast, there's potential for, for crashes and there's potential for get, you know, doing physical damage. That's something we all need to avoid. I mean, we are, we are damn few racers who are on that level and we, sh we have to take care of one, uh, one another, for sure. They told me that I have some the tendon, tendons and muscle, they are kind of stretched, so I need to rest from three to five weeks, I don't know now. I have a lot of pain and uh, yes, it's hard. Let's see. Crashing is never good and Mati now is injured for a, for a month. I'm sure Tati didn't want to do it, I'm sure, because that puts him in a bad position as well. He got disqualified last place, so... But, uh, yeah, he should have avoided, I think. <laughs> That's it for today. Skip us meeting tomorrow, 8 o'clock, first possible, 9 o'clock. Today is not the Terme win. It is, it is, boys. You need to believe. Yeah. Believe in what? <laughs> I want to believe, but it's not true. Believe in what? It's the left. Windy. Sometimes in thermic places, no, you get the wind from the wrong direction for a little while and then... Today looks like a, a thermal day with some southwest wind and sunshine. So hopefully that will, uh, that will turn in our favor and we'll get some slalom conditions this afternoon. But I don't expect much to happen before 12 o'clock, to be honest. Hi, so this is Anton Albo. As you can see, this is the, my sail, my knee right sail, Ego 11. So this is the sail I'm going to use all this season. And uh, I'm going to explain you a little bit how it works. So um, it's very simple. First, for the people who doesn't really know, we have a mast inside the sleeve, a big sleeve here, to make the best profile we can, we can get. So as you can see, we hold on to the boom, and we have this uh, harness line. We hooked on to the harness, and like this, you can release your hands. We're allowed to, to use six, uh, six sizes of, of those cells. Between those sizes, we have 5'6", 6'4", 7'0", 7'8", 8'6", and then 9'4". So we have some shape here, because this shape will provide you early planning and acceleration. The profile is getting thinner, way thinner here, less deep. The cell is opening a little bit like this. So this provides that all the power by the wind that go into the cell get released from the top of the cell because the cell is opening, so it's letting go the power out. Oof. Fucking amazing conditions now. Fuck, stable 7-8, full power. Actually, it's the best we've had so far in the contest. Was was really really windy, nice, smooth. Was good. Enrico finally made it to the final. Oh, I was I was pretty stoked for Enrico to make the final. No, he's a good guy. He's a fair racer. I really enjoy or I really like that in him. Um, he's really he's not trying to like just fuck you over. He's, he's really a fair racer. He tries to be fast and he's committed and concentrated on it, but he's not, he's not an asshole. And that makes him very, very sympathetic. Going to the last day as the leader was a new experience for me. I mean, I've never won an elimination. Uh, I did one at the, the fifth day of the event, which felt amazing. Uh, but it also brings some disadvantages, let's say, you know, because you're the leader, you basically have everything to lose. In semi-final, Eaton had a fucking amazing start and rolled me straight, so I had to come back from last, I think, to fifth. So, uh, obviously not where I want to be. It feels like it just slips out of your hands. But um, I was confident, I knew, I knew I could do better than that. We have wins for another round, so let's go.
Matchek coming in first place and Bruno getting loose. Bruno getting super loose coming into that Mar. Rakowski rounding first. Kurdum, third place. Preen. Right after the race, uh, Bruno was quite upset with me and cursing at me even, but you know, I didn't say anything. Later on he calmed down and he realized that you know this is part of racing. And he came to me to apologize and I really appreciate that. Thank you, man. You too. But here we go. They're coming down. Rudkowski gonna go into that first mark in first place. Oh, it's tight, isn't it? Behind him. So Rukowski, Preen in second. Rukowski feeling a bit of pressure from the German. Nice jive from the German. There's Matthias Isaac in third. In the losers' final, I did a good start at the board. I showed myself that I have the speed. Did a good race. Finished tenth. Wow! I mean, this is crazy. How tight the racing is today. Matteo Iacchino just needs to finish in the top six to guarantee the win at Jinha Beach for the Ulsan PWA World Cup. If Jordi Vonk wins it and Matteo is outside the top six. Jordi Vonk could still win this competition. Here we go, lining up, there's a big gust. It has gone shifty, that's why this is the last elimination. We hear it's a good start up the top end. Albo down that bottom end. But they're coming into that first mark, looking good. There we go, it is Antoine Albo down the bottom end. Fucking hell. So it's Albo, Kestel, Pierre Mortifon, Matteo Iacchino, Tati Franz, Jordi Vonk. But it's, uh, at the moment, Antoine Albo leading this one. Could he sneak on the podium? Nice jibe on the inside of Kestel. So it's Albo rounding first. Mortifon coming through on the inside. Jordi Vaughn, what a nice jibe from Jordi. There we go, Albo on the right, Kestel left. Mortifon in third, Vaughn fighting out with Yakino. Tati Franz on the low line, Tristan Algray behind him, and Enrico Marotti behind those guys. There we go. Albo doing all he can do at the front of the fleet. Yakino still in fourth. We're gonna have to count these guys over the line because they will make a big difference. I cannot believe this. There we go, Albo wins it. Great way to finish it, he cheers. He knows he's just done the massive comeback. Kestel gets second, great result for Kestel. Mortifon third. Yakino wins the competition with a fourth. Tati Franz fifth. Vonk sixth. That means Tristan Algray, by my calculations, has just claimed third place by 0.3. Jordi Vonk will take second and Matteo Iacchino will win the competition here in Korea. I managed to become second in the end, which is amazing. You know, it's already more than a year ago that I was on the podium. It was 2017. Um, so to make it now again feels really, really good. And to be leading the World Tour uh, together with Antoine, it's, it's amazing. It's something new for me. So uh, let's see. I'm very excited for the, for the whole season ahead. Yeah, today we finally got the really good conditions. And it's a reminder of why we come to Jinha Beach. We've been coming here for, for 11 years now. This year we had so much rain and then really gusty conditions. And today was really nice. and. And that keeps us motivated to, to go come back next year.